Aladia Rivera. I work right across the street at the main library. And um, I've been there close to 10 years and came in as business librarian and then adult services manager. Now I oversee programs, events, and outreach, and I work closely with Justin Beach there at the other end of the table. Um, my message today is the Power Your Library card. And it's all about um, what you can get and what you can access to utilize from home or in the building. And we have four branches. We have a main library and three other branches in town. Um, excuse me, four other branches in town. And what you can get with this and the value added that it gives you that if you haven't used this for a time, that you might want to take another look. How many of you are already using us? Is it more remotely or coming in the building? Is in the building. In the building, okay. A lot of obviously because I'm not in the building today, we can't do the um, post-renovation tour. We finished our renovation last year. So the building is remarkably different. If you haven't been in lately, please do take a visit in there. Remarkably different. It's a, almost a 100,000 square foot building and we are maximizing that space. Um, some spaces are opening up. Uh, I think it's February 18th, thereabouts. We're gonna have a maker space opening up in the library. Um, maker movement, very big right now. Um, and, and there's gonna be a number of uh, machines that you can access and uh, things to help you with that maker movement. There's CNC machines, there's vinyl cutters, there's textile equipment, there's a 3D printer. Um, all of that is gonna be debuted very soon. They're gonna be calling that Building 61. Um, what I want to really, more than anything, besides that message of the power of your library card, is assume that the library isn't what it used to be and that it has kept pace with the modern age and the 21st century and the internet. And so, so much of what I'm going to show you today is going to be, of course, on the computer and internet based. Um, on our website, you can see what we've got. This is a relatively new website. Um, we've got my account, catalog, download and stream, research, lifelong learning events, etc. So in terms of taking full advantage of that, I'm just going to primarily go through these and show you how you can access this. A couple of things to know about your actual account with the library. It is as secure as a public library can make it. <laughs> and a um, number of cool things that you can do in your account is you can also keep track of your own reading history if you want to. We've all been at a party and go, oh, I read this great book, can't remember the name of it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will come back and say to us, well, how do I find out what I've read? That's an optional thing for a library user to keep track of one's own reading history in our catalog. Um, you can check out, renew, and return online, etc. A couple things to know about your library catalog. Um, we have, if I click on this button right here, we go to blue. Frequently people will go, oh, well, I was on a page, I was on the Boulder Public Library page. We do an awful lot of troubleshooting on, uh, over the phone with people, and they get caught up and get lost as to where they were with that. So we have that. So what I've done for today is I wanted to have a thread to hold this together, um, rather than just going hither and yon and doing a variety of searches. But I guess Brad Udall is coming on February 17th. He's speaking at the Chautauqua Community House. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I've done, he's going to be talking about water. But. So, so we're going to talk, we're going to, the thread that's going to hold this discussion together is how would I prepare for this? How do I wrap my head around water before Brad Udall comes or even beyond? Look at Flint, Michigan, big topic, water pollution and what's going on. Can you make the screen bigger by any chance? Um, I can make, I can certainly make it better, like yeah. that? Yeah, I can see better? a little better, yeah, it's okay. a little hard to see. You want to see closer, okay. Bob? I'm good, I'll put on glasses. That's good. <laughs> um, so we've got, we've got the theme of water. So what I would like to do with water is utilizing library resources is look at it from a number of different angles. So that's where I'm headed today. I do have a number of handouts that I'm going to make available to you at the end, but I just wanted you to know that that's what's going to hold this together. One thing that's before we leap into the water topic, I just want to remind, I saw a few of these here, so I guess mm -hmm. you all keep these. Yes. Um, we're, going to be, we're working on the next brochure. Um, for the next quarter, but um, programs, events, and outreach, the department with which um, Justin and I are affiliated, um, it's expanding 
wildly. We're going to be using the opening the theater up a great deal more. We're going to be working with um, the cinema program, the Denver, excuse me, the um, Downtown Boulder Inc. is going to be running a cinema program there on the weekends, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays, starting, um, is that late February? February 25th, is it? Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. And uh, we have a concert series that's quite well utilized, and, and just author series. We have uh, Jennifer Egan coming, author. March 17th. March 17th. So we have, and this is just the beginning of how this is really going to grow for the library. Um, again, we have that maker space. We have a summer reading program, so the library is going to be um, very much more bigger. David's vision for the future is just getting larger and larger, advancing and spreading throughout the city. Another one of my handouts here that I'll, I'll just leave for you is how to discover our e-collections, and that's going to be a large portion of what we're going to be doing today. So if I do go to my catalog and I look up water scarcity, So what do I have here? A couple things to know. I've got books, I've got ebooks, audiobooks, just on that limited topic right there. One of the first things that we have is something, an online resource. So for those of you that use the resources, the print resources that we have in the library, either our DVDs, our books, or our magazines, and there's countless other resources that we do have, we also have resources like Hebrary is one of them. Um, what we have are a variety of them, Hebrary and online co hoopla collection. So what are the differences between these? Information is a commodity, so we have to purchase it from the vendors that package it and sell it. So when we start getting into our databases, you'll see that we have a variety of databases that all perform se separate functions. They all look different, their interfaces are different, and they're all behind that powerful library card. We pay your sales tax dollars, pay for these resources. I like to try and um, remind people that very much of what the library does for you is provide you access to a form of commercial free internet. So we were talking earlier about you purchase something, next thing you know you're getting ads because all that information has just spread out that someone has made a purchase and everybody knows about it. You're now behind the library wall, so presumably to some degree, and I'm sure that if somebody wanted to get in and find out what eBrary books you might be reading, I imagine that could be done if they felt that that was valuable information to them. Um, but we have all of these resources that we pay for and make available behind that, um, that, that wall. So for example, if I go to, well, let me just show you a couple of things here. So I've got a number of books relative to um, water scarcity. So if I want to look at this one, for example, and it's more about, how I'm trying to just explain how to, how to actually drive this sort of thing. So I've got a book. It tells me they're available on the shelf. I have, it's available in e-audiobook, and I'm going to show you a highlight on that. Um, we've also got a resource called Prospector. Now, this particular item is actually available. But had you come across an item that wasn't available, the beauty of libraries now, not only does Boulder Public Library affiliate with um, Louisville and Broomfield, they're part of what we call a Flatirons Library Consortium. So we share a catalog. We move our books amongst ourselves and place holds via that catalog quite quickly. But it gets much bigger than that. In the old days, prior to these consortiums and Prospector, if one wanted to get a book from CU, it would more than likely be an interlibrary loan, which we still do, which tends to be more nationally based, and I'll explain why. Um, but now there's a consortium called Prospector. So I can go to Prospector and I can see that there are a number of different titles available in Prospector. And for example, can you all see well enough? Or you want that nope. bigger? Nope. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah. That's better? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
Colorado College, Colorado Mesa University has that item. So if our copies were out or missing or damaged or whatever, we would still be able to get those titles. Um, in Boulder proper, if one had wanted to get something from the University of Colorado and we didn't have it, we would have had to go to Interlibrary Loan. But now with Prospector, if you know it's up at CU, you can have it sent here. Pick it up at Boulder Public Library. And it gets even bigger and better than that. If I click on that button, Mobius, this is a Missouri consortium of libraries that we've now added to that. So often, um, folks that might be prescribing to how it might have been will say, oh, the library doesn't have it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'm going to have to buy it. We can get almost everything mm -hmm. for anybody, for the most part. And then there's another layer beyond that um, called interlibrary loan, where we can get anything internet, excuse me, nationally. We don't go international as a, as, as a general rule. It would be extremely rare that we would, we would do something like that. Prospector. This is what their normal search screen would look like. What we do ask people to do is to not start with Prospector. It, um, some folks will say, well, I'll just go into Prospector and do all my shopping in there for what I'm looking for. We're hoping that you will peel the onion and then work in. Start with Boulder Public Library, go to our consortiums, then go to the statewide Prospector before we go interlibrary loan. So that's just a caveat that um, I want to I wanna share with everybody. So, back to my homepage. So in our catalog, what you're going to come across, you're going to come across titles that have a variety of formats. So we'll just kind of delve into those, into those formats. There's a mobile app. If you wanted to search to it, you can limit to a local history search. And we also have article databases. And I'm just going to zip into some of these article databases for a brief second. EBSCO, been around many, many years, Gale. These are two companies that have been with libraries for decades. And in the print decades, they were providing indexes, et cetera, as well as um, high quality reference materials for us. So what do I have? I have a database called Academic Search Premier. I can go into here. I'm already logged in in, in this particular database. And you can do your search right along in here. So we've got water pollution. I'm going to just go ahead and show you what I've got under water pollution. Note that I can limit this to full text right away, right off the top. I can limit by date just by dragging this over. We're all very much about current information. It goes ahead and it limits that by date. I can limit to academic journals, trade publications, magazines, newspapers, etc. Sometimes people get hung up on um, keyword searching, even on Google. People call the public library and say, I'm Googling and I'm getting nowhere. Help me. <laughs> Why? Because there's a lot of factors uh, out in Google that are there to divert your attention here, buy this, buy that, look at this, um, go to these, these, these sponsored ads. There's people who fight for places, for placement on that, that first page or two. So what I like to, to, again, kind of look at these standard resources that we utilize as this trumps Google in that it really clears out the garbage and helps you get to the properly vetted information. So what do I have here? I have... Um, not only do I have the Polish Journal of Environmental Studies up here, but I also have a Time Magazine article. So I could limit it by going simply to academic journals or trade publications. So if I really was in the water business or water cleanup business, whatever my business might be, I could go to trade publications, get rid of all that stuff, and it would have saved me a lot of time. Um, magazines, newspapers, reviews, etc. Back to terms that people use. I, and in preparing for this, I was digging around in some of our databases and catalogs and kept putting in ocean pollution. 
or oceans pollution. That didn't work. Turned out to be under marine pollution. And bam, I started finding all kinds of things. So just finding those terms and being willing to stay with your search or ask someone for help, like a librarian, good way to go, um, will get you where you want to be. So if I want to look in something, oh, let's see. I'm going to limit this just a little bit and go to environmental. I'm going to just limit that to just solely water pollution. I now have the Research Journal of Agricultural Science. I'm going to open that up. Would I necessarily be able to find this for free out on the internet? Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes people will ask us questions and I'll say, well, have you checked the web yet? No. And you'd be amazed at what we can find. A couple of things to know about a database like EBSCO is you can create a sign-in and a folder. You can save things to a folder. You could also set your search in this database so that it goes out and looks for water pollution in Michigan or in China or whatever topic you want. It'll run that search for you and drop the results in your email. Whoa. So it's like, a Google, <laughs> it's like a Google alert, right? Yeah. It's a whole other level when we start to get to that point as to um, how you do that. And that, that's, again, that's when you just make a phone call to your librarian and say, how do I set this search alert in this particular database? So I was just simply under this. And one thing you're going to find, pardon me. Can we is, ask a question? Can we make this I want you to, yes. Where is the librarian sitting that if I walked in and says I'm an idiot, can't find anything, help me out? Where are they? Great question. As you walk in the, walk in right. the library right, right here over on Arapaho, um, you walk in, there's two staffers right off to your right, possibly one greeting you at the front door. Um, you can ask them any question. And then you put me in touch with a person that says... Um, they may be that person. Yeah, maybe that mm -hmm. We have a new service model now okay. where everybody at a service desk is empowered to really go where reference, oh, only reference librarians shocking. went before. That's shocking. Now, some staff are more experienced than others. Um, so, for example, I've been the business librarian for many years over there. So someone might say, they might scratch their head, give it a go, but then they might track down the business librarian or track down another staffer who may have more experience in searching with a particular database. Right. So second question, this, this looks like a massive website. I mean, how did this come about? How, who did it? This must be a multi-million dollar website. I'm not gonna put a number on how much this might have cost to develop, but we do have a webmaster. And every library system out there, I think if you compared us to other library systems, you'd find that ours is probably as complex as anybody else's, and there are librarians who go to school, library school, they become webmasters, and they know how to put all these things together. Mm -hmm. And there's thousands of dollars of databases backing up this website right. and catalogs and catalog systems, which is why we have consortiums, because then you can, you can gain access to these large catalogs if you have multiple libraries pay, help, helping to pay for that and support it and have a systems librarian, for example, who runs the back end of these resources. And how long this has been, I mean, I'm sure you're constantly updating it, but this version of this uh, website has been a long... Uh, About two years now. Two years. Uh -huh. About two years. And it's a lot to maintain, and yeah. it just requires eagle eyes on, this, on, the, on the part of the staff to make sure that things get updated. So, for example, my business class, we changed it from Business 101 to Business 1.0. Well, it's taken a little while for that's gotten to get changed on the website. But that's still going, that will happen. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So you've, any other questions while we're here? And please do. I mean, we're, we're such a small crew. I would really love to keep this really pretty easy. Um, so you've got a lot of options right along in here if you're looking for a great read. So, for example, when I talk about a great read, how many of you guys, how many of you all might have one of these? Oh. Okay. So, water. What can you do with water? You can have a, you can have a, you can drink it. You can cook with it. You can it runs down the creek. A lot of things you can read fiction books on water to prepare for grad you dolls. Um, if you don't, if you want to kind of keep it on the more optimistic level, oh, there we go. secret messages in water. All right. 
Scan C objects. So you can do an audio book. Okay, However, with your iPhone, with your iPad, with your tablet at home? You could go with your iPhone into the library, get a book, and listen to it on your uh, That's Even easier than that. You can do it from home. Yeah. Right, that, right. So, uh, wow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I've been paying, I don't know how much for those audios. Right. So, so, everybody, yeah, people pay for audible.com, right? right. Pandora. What are we? We're commercial free Pandora and I'm going to show you how that works. That's exactly what you can do with, with music and we're going to get to that in a second. So, speaking of download and stream, perfect entree. So, way to look at this is, and I think this is a lot for people when they look at it, they go, oh, I don't know what this means. So what do we have? We have vendors proprietary names of their companies, right? They have a product to sell. So they sell it to libraries, Overdrive, Overdrive for Kids, Hoopla. What I had just pressed there was a Hoopla audiobook. Okay, there it is right on there. Um, Ebrary and Zinio. So what are they? They're audiobooks, ebooks, e-magazines, music, and videos that you can get for free through the library. Now, is it everything that's just getting published and is on Amazon? Probably not. And it's not unlike the model that when a publisher publishes a print book, they want it out in the shelves, or a magazine, they put it out on the shelves, they want to give it an opportunity to sell a little bit, right? So that when libraries order their books, and it's gotten better over time, there may be a little delay before we get it. Maybe not. Um, we used to call them embargoes relative to... Um, articles that would come out of uh, scientific journals or whatever kind of Time Magazine, Newsweek, they would hold it back from our online databases for a week or so or a month. Sometimes there were six month embargoes so they can recoup their costs before they make it available for free. So I don't think they see us as a competitor, they just see us as kind of a um, someone who will share that information and that knowledge and that product of theirs, but perhaps hold it back just a little bit so they have an opportunity to recoup their costs. So if I've got audiobooks, what do I have? This is, you were saying, I can do this from home. If you look right here, what kind of device do you have at home? I, or with uh, your iPhone? iPhone, iPhone, perfect. So what you would do then is go to the instructions, you download the app onto your phone, and then everything in this collection, and I'm going to show you how that collection works, it's called the Front Range Downloadable Library. I think what throws folks is that we have so many names and so many things named. And you, you, you click on something and then, whoa, where did I go? I thought I was in the Boulder Public Library. I'm now in the Front Range Downloadable Library. There's featured collections right here, ebook fiction, nonfiction, Audiobook fiction, audiobook nonfiction, children and teen titles. They have recently added ebooks right along in here. Recently added audiobooks. So, so it sounds like you're an audio fan. I'm, yeah. I'm a big audio fan. Yeah, you, know, you go to the gym, you gotta do something with your mind mm -hmm. while your body's moving. <laughs> That's audiobook right. Audiobook 6 a.m. is the only way to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, we have all of these resources, so you can see the little the little headphones right there. Mm -hmm. So if I pick one, you can just go to borrow and you can add that to your app on your iPhone. And the instructions will tell you how to do it. The first time always takes just a little I don't bit need longer. No instruction. Ellie's going to do it. Yeah, we got one. That's probably true. <laughs> or what people do is they walk into the library with their iPhone and they say, help me. And we say, we're right there with See, you. I may be old, but I'm slow. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there's a world of information in, in here that you can, you can access. <coughs> so, for example, what do I have on um, I've an Overdrive Media Console? I have something on the iPad as well on Overdrive. Let's see. Siri's not available. Let's see what we've got here. also from Hoopla. So there's videos you can actually just go ahead and play on there. So there's videos that you can access, same thing. The key is to go to, get yourself set up with Hoopla. So, so you're downloading them, you're not streaming them. 
Very good question. Hoopla is streamed. It's like Pandora. So you need the internet. You need the internet. So some people go, oh, well, that's not going to help me if I'm driving. No, but Overdrive certainly will. You can certainly download materials from Overdrive onto your device. In, or if you want to stay at home, then you can stream it. And I think as people move forward into that and start, I mean, a lot of folks got very, like, they wanted the actual concept of downloading it to their device. Mm -hmm. But if you're streaming it, what if you just want to listen to David Bowie a little bit, just because you hadn't heard him and you, you heard he died and you want to just kind of take a trip down memory lane, you can do that in these resources. And you've got all your instructions right along in here on how to do that. So here we go, audiobooks, movies, music. Is The Revenant going to be in here as a movie? No, it's in the movie theaters. <laughs> so, you know, it's all, you know, when you think about all of the resources that you have, you have the standard movie theaters, then you've got things coming out on DVD, then you have streaming via Netflix, then you have your library resources. However, something cropped up for me that was very interesting. Um, a very popular book, I'm sure, and this isn't relative to water at this juncture, but, um, I came up with H is for Hawk, and this is a very, very popular book right now, 2015. There's a number of them. Um, I, was, I was very surprised that it would turn up in this resource so quickly, and it did. Mm -hmm. So the key, and again, part of my main message is try the library again, because you might be surprised at what you can get and how easily you'll be able to get that. Mm -hmm. And collections are just as limited, you mentioned Netflix, but they add and take off movies all the time and it isn't necessarily really recent. It's kind of bizarre. I don't know what their system is for deciding what streams and what doesn't, but it's it's also very limited. You know, mm -hmm. you can't always find exactly what you're looking for. Or you have to wait for a very right. long time until the mm -hmm. DVD, you know the DVD's out there, but it's not out on, on Netflix. Right. So. Ex, you know, except that the library may have some of the very same limitations with that. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of talked about audiobooks and ebooks. We've got Overdrive, Hoopla. Then we have eBrary. So if we're talking academic materials, um, this is the ticket. We have literally thousands and thousands of academic materials in the eBrary collection. Let's see. So you can see we have World Bank publications, State University of New York Press. You can get to your table of contents. You can download the item to you, to your resource if you wish. It expires after 14 days. That's that's another thing about the downloadable materials is they just they become unavailable to you. So people say, are there overdue fines? No because somehow the system is rigged so that it pulls it out so you don't have any overdue fines. So you've got a, a book like this. You can either stream it or you can do a full download and keep it on your um, device for up to 14 days. You can go to your table of contents. Let me just zip to a particular portion in there under fresh water availability. Assume that if you have a very academic topic, for example, Michael, anything you might be interested in, eBrary might be a first, first place to go. That's going to give you that high level of academic quality that you're hoping for. All these icons at the top, top you can download, you can bookmark, you can print up to a certain number of pages. Oh. You can highlight, you can annotate in there. And if you are the kind of individual that can absorb more usernames and passwords, which we're all challenged by right now, you can create a bookshelf in here and it will stay there indefinitely. So if you, rather than, oh, I have, you, you're pursuing a particular topic and you want to keep everything organized, especially within your databases, you can do that in EBSCO, you can do that in most of the databases, Justin. So your bookmark can view it for as long and as, as frequently and, as, and forever if you want. But if yes. you download it, it'll disappear at some point. The download will go away. You can still come back and revisit this website and pick right back up. Okay. Right. 
but if you just want to keep it on your bookshelf in there with things you have annotated and set aside, so for your ongoing research, yeah. you don't have to clutter up your bookshelves, you can do that. Right. Ebrary, bottom line on that, highly academic, quality material. Mm -hmm. Tell us questions? more about the music. Back to the music. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, there's so many licensing issues in that. I'm yeah. curious to see how you guys have figured that out. Okay, meaning? Mean, you know, every time you play a song, somebody's got to pay somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, there's Universal, Sony, and Warner. You know, those guys get something from someone. So I'm curious to see who's the middleman that is selling that. And the vendor, i.e. Overdrive, vendor? Hoopla. They have already made those deals. Right. And they allow the library for a fee to have that service, mm -hmm. and then you guys buy that service and then pass it on. Precisely. Mm -hmm. Overdrive is structured a little differently than Hoopla. They actually have it so there's a flat fee for us based on our population. Hoopla is dependent upon use. Right, exactly. So the That's more necessary. that you use Hoopla, in the end, the more the libraries will end up paying for that. But we'll only be paying for the things that you use as opposed to the things that you don't use. Mm -hmm. So that's an int it's a whole different model. And then it's delivered differently. It's streamed as opposed to downloaded. Mm -hmm. which so has the community moved to this? He, er, I mean, yes. People are, I mean, people are getting being there. used and it's yeah. out there. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'm not using it, but no, after I mean, this I will, but, yeah. you know, yeah, it and is. That, that seems to be the thing. I feel like everything that you're sharing is really fitting into kind of the overall cultural model where people are moving away from ownership and wanting right. more of these services of the borrow right. or the streaming and all of that. And so it's interesting that all of this is completely available in the library, but I feel like a lot Nobody of people don't it, know that. Yeah. That's part and of why I wanted to have this. You know? I mean, yeah. I've yeah. seen this, and it's still a little complicated to get for the first time. Mm -hmm. Another thing, speaking of like secrets that the library is not trying to keep, that's a secret. Um, a secret that we don't want to keep at all is how many of you would use Consumer Reports before you replaced your dishwasher? Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Every day, somebody slogs up the second floor to the library and they come <laughs> in and say, "Where's your Consumer Reports?" And I said, "Well, I have it over here, but you could have stayed home." Yeah. So let me show you how that works because um, right here under research, right here under, I go in under consumer reports. Pretty easy to get to. Very easy to get to. Um, if I'm the kind of person that likes to read, I like to read consumer reports. Some people do. You just never know what, you, what you're going to find, but there it is. There's consumer reports. Now, um, if I wanted to search in there for washers, so what's heartening about this is it's going to look just like what you remember seeing in the actual magazine. Yeah. Right there. You can download that. You can send it to somebody. See these options here on the on the left-hand side, you can print it, you could email it to someone, you could save it to a folder, you could save it to your computer, you could share it. So, you don't need to come to the library if you need something. So I need a library account to log on here, though. Precisely. Is that pretty clear? Mm -hmm. How that works? So, that is, uh, I'm always kidding my coworkers, we should take out a full-page ad in the paper uh -huh. on this one, because yeah. so many people do not know that you can get to consumer reports for free through the library. Mm -hmm. And then that's again through that EBSCO host database that I was referring to earlier. Mm -hmm. And that was under research. I'm going to go back to download and stream. So yeah, just a reminder. Never used, he mentioned music. Can, can you stream music or is it just like it's like an album that you download? Hoopla is streamed. Okay. okay, remember this audio book that I just pressed the button? That's a Hoopla audio book. So you can go into there. So what you're going to want to do is to go in and look and see what they have for music. Okay, and you can browse all. You've it's got not like stations. No, it's like it's somebody's album. Yes. Okay. So we could start going with the best of David Bowie right here, right now, if we wanted to, mm -hmm. and just start streaming it. Mm -hmm. um, they have featured popular genres and collections. So let's go to genres so you can see what sorts of things to expect there. 
alternative, blues, children's, Christian gospel. Now note, it's taking a little bit of time to load, mm -hmm. but... Um, it's a lot of information. <laughs> it's a lot of information, and, you know, we're, this, this company is competing with iTunes and Pandora and all of these other things, the same sort of thing, but every year these resources get better and better, mm -hmm. and that is, is quite nice. Classical. Trying to get to sleep at night. Well, there's something there that can you can just put on your phone, you set set a timer, and I, I believe it's um, I think it is oh, oh, that Hoopla that actually has a little timer, so you can set it for like to 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 turn off after 15, 15 20 minutes. Uh -huh. So if you want to just lay in bed and read in the dark, uh -huh. you can just do that and drift off to sleep, and pick it up. Dance, easy listening, electronic, fitness and workout, folk. So. There's a fair amount of music there. Mm -hmm. Does that answer that? Mm -hmm. But I want to show something else that, I, that again, is one of these um, secrets that the library has that um, I really wish wasn't a secret. <laughs> Smithsonian and Alexander Street Press have come together and put together um, Smithsonian Global Sound, Contemporary World Music, a jazz music library, and it's all relative to American history, the, the jazz stuff, the opera, all that is relative to um, American history, um, contemporary history, um, other countries, um, other cultures. Let me see if I can get this to, to load relatively quickly here. So if I wanted to, let's go to Israel, Palestine here and see what I've got. And if I want to do Biblical chants, oh my goodness. Babylonian biblical chants. Wow, jeez. And let's see what kind That's of sound I'm going to get out of here. Let's see later. <laughs> we were having sound issues this morning. Oh, I th I'm having sound issues because I'm cranked all the way up. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, well, just know you can get Babylonian biblical chants here. And what's cool about this is you can just set this, you can have a dinner party with a particular theme. You can do you know, um, Israeli music, let's say. You don't have to go out and buy and download all the Israeli music. If you want to pick from here what it is you want, you can set that, and there's your dinner party music. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be really unique stuff. Um, so that would be a way to do it. I'm sorry that the sound is out on that. But yeah. here we go. That's the sort of thing that you've got access to and it just goes on and on and on in terms of volume in terms of what you can get um, the quantities are amazing smithsonian global sound for libraries you've got american song popular music library always available as long as you have an internet connection does that yep. help round out your mm -hmm. need and to of be course, honest with you i feel like i'm drinking from a fire hose i know yeah. <laughs> That's true. I've been hearing that term a lot lately. It's, really <laughs> and the, it, it's a lot of information, and, yeah. and I wish I was smarter, but again, I'm going to look into yeah. it and figure it out, because once you do... Um, I mean, literally, I mean, we could just go on and on highlighting so much. So, how are we doing for time? We're at Well, let's leave some time, because I want to have okay. a bigger discussion, okay. Uh, too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I show you all one more Absolutely. fun thing? Okay, we haven't even gone anywhere near with this, some of the things I wanted to, but a couple things to know is that under, um, we also have magazines that you can get to available online. So all of these magazines right here, you can read right on, you can, you can select issues, and this is just page one. Yeah. So these are the kinds of things that you could download via this thing called Zinio, and I have handouts here to show you, um, to actually help you set up some of this, um, and I'll just leave those here, um, that you can get in, into these, you can put them on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer, so if you're at the airport and you need to mm -hmm. kill some time, there you go, you don't have to run to Hudson News and leave your money okay. there. Um, National Geographic, anybody have National Geographic collections sitting at home in the basement? Yep. Yes? It's the American thing to do is it have a is. National Geographic collection. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's see. We have National Geographic online that you can go to. So um, is it as satisfying as um, reading one? Maybe, maybe not. 
<laughs> but if you, if you need, we have it in print as well, so the library has them. Um, but we also, you also have access through these resources. We have also something called New York Times Historical. So you can look up historical articles as they were printed at the time. So if you want to see um, um, December 7th, 1944, um, you want to see what that looked like in the paper, you can see what that's going to look like. It's like microfiche. Yes, it is. It's like <laughs> microfiche. So a um, couple things to know just before I go away. We have a full-blown calendar that you can go to um, through events. We have a cinema program, book and discussion groups. We have a full calendar here. Mm -hmm. Services like Ask a Librarian. You have any questions, you can email us, you can book a librarian, you can ask someone for help. We have a suggest a title option. We need you to tell us what you want, okay? We're your library. So that is the key point, is we're here for you. We probably do more than what you think we've done in the past, if you haven't visited us lately. And we're looking for so much feedback and input as to what you really want. And we have a fairly strong uh, business research component. Um, we actually have a number of databases and such, and there is a class that's taught once a, once a month that goes through, um, this is like a glorified phone book, mm -hmm. but it, it downloads into Excel spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make a company list or you're, you know, someone who's done job searching, et cetera, and you want to make a nice tidy list, the downside of Google, when you type something in like plumbers and boulder, what do you get? Interesting results of the big map with a lot of balloons. It doesn't really tell you a nice alphabetical list like an old phone book might have. So I'm going to stop there and just let you all drive it and let okay. me know what you're Thank hoping you. for. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you.